Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, we're going to be a little short today, I think, um, but we're still going to be faithful and do this. I took a break last week. Uh, my family went on vacation, so um, we're back today in the park at Shepherdsville, Kentucky, and we're going to be doing the live Bible reading in the park. And uh, there's uh, you know lots of people walking around, driving by, and we got the farmers market back there. Uh, so it's the the location where I felt like we should set up this week and uh, I'm, I don't know if other people are on their way but James is a short book so uh, you know to um, other people to join in on this but anyway uh, God bless you all and uh, may the word of the Lord prosper that for which he sent it it shall not return void okay but we're declaring the word of God over this atmosphere and there's so many uh, people and it's in this city in this area in this state in this country that just declare so many wicked and evil things over the atmosphere and so we're going to declare the pure word of god and uh, we are seeing uh, the effects thereof so uh, this is uh, kind of a john the baptist style ministry just a voice out in the wilderness preparing the way of the lord okay uh, but god's allowed us to make connections with people out here and um, you know get uh, try to get people involved in a local church and, and lead them to christ Okay, that's what everything's all about, leading people to Christ. Amen. So I'm going to just get started here on the public reading of the book of James. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that gives to all liberally and upbraids not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. For a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice that he, in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low. Because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with the burning heat, but it withers the grass and the flower thereof falls, and the grace of the fashion of it perishes. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. But when the lust has conceived, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the, the word of truth, that we should be a first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man works not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity and of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholds himself, and goes his way, and straightway forgets what manner of man he was. But whoso looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious, 
and bridle not his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit widows and the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to persons. For if there come into your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come also a poor man in vile raiment, and you have respect to him that wears the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Are you not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, has not God chosen the poor of this world that are rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which He has promised to them that love Him? But you have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do they not blaspheme that worthy name by, by the which you are called? If you fulfill the royal law according to the Scripture, you shall love your neighbor as thyself you do well. But if you have respect to persons, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now if you commit no adultery, yet if you kill, you are become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. For he shall have judgment without mercy that has showed no mercy. And mercy rejoices against judgment. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and, not, and filled, notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God. You do well. The devils also believe and tremble. But will you know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? See thou how faith wrought with his works. And by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified, not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to uh, bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths and that they obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which, th which though they be great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor wishes. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold, how great a matter is a little fire kindled, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed, and has been tamed by mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith we bless God, even the Father, and therewith we curse men, which are made after the similitude of God. 
Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, a vine, figs? So can no fountain yield both salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descends not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy, with good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Do they not come here even of your lusts that war in your members? You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lusts. You adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Do you think that the Scripture says in vain, the spirit that dwells in us lusts to envy, but he gives more grace. Wherefore, he said, God resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and He shall lift you up. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaks evil of his brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you that judges another? Go to now, you that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that, va that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. For you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you rejoice in, in your boastings, and all such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. Go to now, you rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered. The rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped treasures together for the last days. Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you have kept back by fraud, cries. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. You have lived in pleasure on the earth and have been wanton. You have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed the just. He does not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waits for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until he receive the early and the latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draws nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge stands before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful 
and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, and your nay nay, lest you fall into condemnation. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. If he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converts the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. It was the epistle of James. I just feel like doing a little extra today. I'm going to read Isaiah. Now I will sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved has a vineyard in a very fruitful hill, and he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you between me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard than I have done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought forth wild grapes. Go to now, I tell you, that I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof. It shall be trodden down. And I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord is of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression, for righteousness, but behold, a cry. Woe unto them that join to the house, that lay field to field, till there be no place that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. In mine eyes, said the Lord of hosts of a truth, many houses shall be desolate, great and fair without inhabitant. Yea, ten acres of vineyard shall yield one bath, and the seed of a homer shall yield an ephah. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink and continue until night till wine inflame them. And the harp and the vial and the tabret and the pipe and the wine are in their feasts, yet they regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operation of His hands. Therefore my people are gone into captivity, because they have no knowledge, and their honorable men are famished, and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore hell has enlarged herself, and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory and their multitude and their pomp, and he that rejoices shall descend into it. And the mean man shall be brought down, and the mighty man shall be humbled, and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness. Then shall the lambs feed after their manner, and the waste places of the fat ones shall, eat, shall, shall strangers eat. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity, and sin as it were with a cart rope that say, let him make seed and hasten his work, that we may see it. And let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come, 
that we may know it. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devours the stubble and the flame consumes the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness and their blossom shall go up as dust because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despise the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people. And he shall stretch forth his hand against them and has smitten them. And the hills did tremble and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. And he will lift up an ensign to the nations from afar and will hiss unto them from the end of the earth. And behold, they shall come with speed swiftly. Neither shall be weary nor stumble among them. None shall slumber nor sleep. Neither shall the girdle of their loins be loosed, nor the latchet of their shoes be broken, whose arrows are sharp and all their bows bent. Their their horses' hooves shall be counted like flint and their wheels like a whirlwind. Their roaring shall be like a lion and they shall roar like the young lions. Yea, they shall roar and lay hold of the prey and shall carry it away safe and none shall deliver it. In that day they shall roar against them like the roaring of the sea. And if one look unto the land, behold, darkness and sorrow, and the light is darkened in the heavens thereof. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it were seraphims, each covered his face, Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, with with two he covered his feet, and with two he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, Yahweh of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cries. And the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, Lord, send me. And he said, Go. And tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. And make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. And I said, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall remain, and shall be eaten as a tail tree, and as an oak, whose substance is in them. When they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. Any of you all watching this, any, anybody that's hearing this, I want you to know that though your sins be as scarlet, the blood of Jesus can wash them white as snow. Okay? I myself have failed God greatly in my life. There's nothing holy in and of my own self. But everything good in me, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. And it was Jesus who died on a cross and rose again the third day to redeem for himself a people. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the suffering of the cross. And my friend, that joy was to redeem so that many sons would come to glory. 
And I am one of those sons that have come to glory. I have been born again unto a living hope. My friend, this world has nothing to offer you. This world and all the vanities thereof, even as James talked about there, the, your, your money is going to perish one day. Your gold and your silver is going to be destroyed. My friend, whether, whether you see it taken away by the hands of men or you see your breath taken away from the Lord God, your money will perish with you. But there is a blessed hope, the hope of resurrection, wherewith we can cry, Abba, Father. We have received the spirit of adoption. And my friends, we have the living hope, being born again by the Spirit of God. He prophesied through Ezekiel, I will put my spirit within you. I will give you a new heart. So friend, if you hear the word of the Lord and you're cut to the heart and you're convicted, you will die and face the judgment of God. I want you to know that. It's a truth. You have to know. You have to know that there is a way of escape. And God is reaching out. God is opening to you the doors to just say yes to Jesus. The grace of God has appeared to all men. First to say no to sin and then now to say yes to Jesus. The grace of God is open to you. It's appeared to you. And this grace of God brings salvation. So my friend, just join in with the grace of God. Stop striving against the Lord. Stop resisting Him and start resisting temptation by His power in you. My friend, God is preparing for Himself a people, a bride, spotless and blameless. She's clothed in her righteous deeds. And everything that a man does will be brought to the judgment seat. Okay? So, yes, there's, there's plenty of wicked uh, preachers out there. There's plenty of, of uh, uh, swindlers and thieves Okay, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Okay, anybody that comes from another way other than the pure word of God that Jesus taught is a thief and a robber. Okay, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus Christ came to give life, an abundant life. My friend, this is eternal life, that we may know God and Jesus Christ whom He sent. And the only way we can do that, my friend, is by repenting, turning from your sin, calling upon Him and receiving His Holy Spirit. Okay, because this is the, this is the beautiful, uh, uh, it's not so much a mystery to say because uh, it's revealed to us, but it is mysterious, so to speak, the, uh, of the Trinity, the triune God that is revealed in, this, in the Scriptures of the Holy Bible. Okay, that... This is the God who created the world. In Him, we have all our life and being. We move and live in Him. Okay? He, he's opened His mouth. And I'm just looking at these trees and the sky. And my friend, you see all the stars at night. He opened His mouth. He said, let there be light. And He created all these with His Word. And then He sent His Son, the Word, God the Word, God the Eternal Son, He sent Him in the form of a little baby, born of a virgin, to live a perfect and holy life, well-pleasing unto God. So God, please God, for us, my friend. See, you're, you're not just... You, the, the idea of atonement and substitution... It's not just that Jesus was a man who died on a cross, but He was very God of very God. God pleased God for God. So that when He died, He bore your sins on the cross and He went into the tomb and we, He rose again the third day. My friend, when He died, the, the temple in Jerusalem, the curtain was torn from top to bottom. And previously, before that, the, no man could enter into the presence of God with any sin in his life. Even the high priest had to have a rope tied around his waist when he went in to offer the, the blood of the sacrifice. Because if he had any unconfessed sin, he would, he would die on the spot and they had to pull him out by the rope. Nobody could go in and get his body. Because the presence of the Lord cannot ab abide with iniquity. Isaiah says, 
that your iniquities have separated you from God, but his arm is not too short to save and his ear is not too deaf to hear. So my friend, yes, because of your sin, and you sin because you are a sinner by nature, because your great-granddaddy Adam gave you that inheritance. And yet, there is the last Adam that came, Jesus Christ, who opened the door of heaven. When Jesus died on the cross, even men came out of their graves. That's a scripture. Oh, but my friend, not only did he die and rise again, but when he ascended on high, he sent down the Holy Spirit to indwell us. And so now the very God, the very God who spoke this world into existence now lives in us. How much more intimate can you be? My friend, you think about a, a marriage relationship and that is how God designed it for the two to become one flesh. You understand? For two to, for two to become one flesh. You understand what I'm saying? And now, but God, when He comes to abide in us, He does not leave us, but He, is, he, he comes to renew our nature. And this Holy Spirit, by grace, through faith, as we yield in faith, He purifies us. Hallelujah. So my friend, purify your hearts, you sinners, and cleanse your, your minds, you double-minded. Come unto the Lord, humble yourselves. And just call out to Jesus today. If you have yet, if you have yet to call upon Jesus. It's simple, my friend. You don't have to have anybody lay hands on you. You don't have to walk an aisle. Okay, you don't have to sign a card. Just call out to Jesus. Just call out to His name. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins if we confess before Him. God bless you all. Just Jesus, forgive me, I'm a sinner. Thank you for receiving me into your kingdom. My friend, the, the thief on the cross when Jesus died, he never attended a Bible study. He, he, never, he was never baptized. And yes, you, it, it, you should obey God in baptism. But this thief on the cross, he called upon Jesus at his dying breath. And they, all he said was, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And the Lord Christ said unto him, today you will be with me in paradise. I'm telling you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. My friend, you just imagine that. When this man, who, who had never been to a church service, had, had never been to a Bible study, didn't know anything about theology, and he, he appears into the pearly gates and everybody's asking him, how did you get here? Weren't you that guy that was, weren't you a thief? And he said, I don't know. All I know is that that man in the middle said I could come. And my friend, that's the truth for you today. God has commanded all men everywhere to repent and to receive the Lord. Whoever beholds and believes the Son has eternal life. And so if, the, if faith has been graced upon your heart today, then obey in faith and call out to Him. Jesus, I receive you. Amen. Well, God bless you all. Uh, if there's... Uh, uh, I obviously can't... Uh, interact with the comments while this is live but if, if anybody's been watching this i'll go back and and um and, and try to reach out to you um and um if, if you are a christian but you're not a member of a local church i want to encourage you uh to go to the website neverforgettheblood.org neverforgettheblood.org slash respond neverforgettheblood.org slash respond r-e-s-p-o-n-d Okay, just like Aretha Franklin saying, right? R E S P O N D. Never forget the blood.org slash respond. My friend, there's a little form down there at the bottom that you can fill out, and we can help you get connected with a local church. It's very vital for your spiritual health. If you have received the Lord and you want to continue in this faith, you must continue in this faith. My friend, if you've received the Lord, the enemy's going to bring an onslaught of attack against you. 
and you you must be in, in fellowship with a close uh, uh, relationships with uh, with other believers that can pray for you and lift you up and 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 remind you of the word of God because we're we're so we have such a tendency to forget my friend but that's why God has given us his word okay and, and he's designed us for relationship. God in himself as the Trinity ha is eternally relational. Okay, so God, and we are made in his image. We are made for relationship. So don't cut yourself off from the body of Christ. You do, you, you do yourself a great disservice by neglecting the fellowship of the saints. My friend, and, and so if you fill out that form, we can help get you connected with, with a church in your area. And, and uh, you know, whether you do that or not, I encourage you to, but whether you do that or not, Make sure you find a church that is teaching you the uncompromising word of God and one that is encouraging you and, and, and thrusting you, <laughs> amen, into good works, into obedience of, of Christ, okay? And one that's holding you accountable in your spiritual life and, and in, a, in a church that's providing an atmosphere where you can encounter the Lord and worship Him unhindered. Because the obedient, the, the command is that we love the Lord our God not only with all our mind, but with all of our heart and soul as well. And so, with all of our emotions, with all of our with all of our being, we serve the Lord. So, friend, God bless you all, and just until next time, just see to it that no man steal thy crown, and never forget the blood. Amen.